Hi everyone, welcome back to Tech Cravers. If you just picked up an Aoi and Thor, or if you're thinking about getting one, this video is going to be your complete start to finish setup guide, at least for dual screen emulation. We're starting from a fresh factory reset device, and by the end of this video, you'll have a fully setup handle that feels more like a real retro console than your typical Android device. I'll walk you through the initial boot, the most important system settings, how to install emulators, how to add your games, and most importantly, how to properly configure everything, including dual screen setup for systems that really benefit from it. We'll also finish things off by installing a clean front end, so when you turn on your Aoi and Thor, it boots straight into a beautiful console style experience instead of a messy app launcher. This guide is designed for beginners, but even if you have set up emulators before, there are plenty of tips and tweaks here that will help you get the best possible experience out of your new Thor. So grab your device, make sure it's charged, and let's start from the very beginning. Now let's jump into it. Now, the very first thing I recommend doing after starting up your Aoi and Thor for the first time is installing Emulation Station for Android. Emulation Station is what's called a frontend. Instead of opening individual emulator apps every time you want to play a game, a frontend gives you a console-like interface, where all your systems and games are displayed in one place with box arts, lists and easy navigation. Much more like a real gaming console. Now in this guide we're actually not going to use Emulation Station primarily as our game launcher, instead we're going to use it for something just as important. Setting up a clean and well organized ROM and folder structure from the very beginning. Doing this early makes everything else in the setup process much easier, such as emulator configuration, game scanning and even switching frontends later on if you want to. Emulation Station for Android is only available through a one time payment on their Patreon, which costs around $5. Technically it's a subscription, but you can cancel it immediately and you'll still receive all future updates by email, so you're not locked into anything. This step is completely optional since it does cost money, and you can skip it if you really want to, but trust me when I say this, for the time it saves and the clean foundation it gives your setup, it's worth every single dollar. Once you have paid for their Patreon and received the APK file for Emulation Station, go ahead and open your device's download folder and launch the file. You may get a prompt asking you to allow your file browser to install apps or make changes to your device. That's completely normal, just approve it. The installation only takes a few seconds and once it's done you should see a new app icon called ESDE on your home screen. Go ahead and launch it. On the first screen tap begin setup, then tap open permission screen and allow emulation station to access and manage files on your device. Once that is done, simply press the back arrow and return to the setup. Next you will be asked to choose a directory where Emulation Station will store its settings and configuration files. Emulation Station already creates a default folder for this, so if you tap select directory you'll be taken straight into the recommended location, and if you're happy with it, just tap use this folder. If you prefer you can also change this location, for example if you want everything stored on a micro SD card instead. After that you'll do the exact same thing for your ROMs folder, which is where all your games will eventually be stored. And now comes an important step. Emulation Station will ask if you want to create system directories. Make sure you tap create them. This will automatically generate folders for virtually every system you can think of, neatly organized inside your ROMs directory. And this is exactly why we're using Emulation Station for this setup. And once that is done, the initial setup is complete. Tap I understand and let Emulation Station start up. You most likely don't have any games added yet, so when the pop-up appears, simply choose quit and we'll come back to this later. Now, if you open any file browser on your Aoi and Thor and navigate to your device's root directory, you should see a folder called ROMs, filled with a large number of subfolders. These folders are where you place all of your games, also known as ROMs. Each folder corresponds to a specific system. And if you're ever unsure which game goes into which folder, just open the folder itself, for example the GBC folder that I'm opening here, and inside every folder you'll find a small TXT file. If you open it, it clearly explains which system the folder is for and which file formats are supported. In this case, it's Game Boy Color, and as you can see, it supports a quite a wide range of file types. So if your game file matches one of the formats listed in the TXT file, you're good to go. Just copy the ROM into that folder. This makes it very easy to organize your games correctly, and it avoids a lot of confusion later on. Now, all that's left to do is to fill those folders with your ROM files. How you do this is entirely up to you, you can transfer your games from a computer using a USB flash drive like this one, and you might already have a prepared micro SD card, 
or you can use an external drive, which is what I usually do. In my case, I keep all of my game dumps on this ultra fast external SSD, which lets me transfer games at several hundred megabytes per second. For example, using the Disk Pro from Charge, I can copy over my entire Wii U library in under a minute, instead of those 15 to 20 minutes it would normally take with a standard USB drive. This isn't even a sponsored segment or anything like that, it's just a genuine tip. Using faster storage can dramatically speed up the setup process, especially if you're transferring larger systems. And once your ROMs are copied into the correct system folders, you're officially done with this step. Now it's time to install our emulators, and in this video we're going to focus specifically on dual screen systems. Start by clicking the first link in the video description, which will take you to Sapphire Rhodonite's GitHub page. Once you're there, click on Repositories and scroll down until you find Melon DS Android, and then scroll down a bit further to Releases. Click on it and then scroll down a bit more, and under Assets, download the latest APK file. At the time of recording this video, the latest version is 0.5.0. Next, click the second link in the video description, which will take you to the fork of the Nintendo 3DS emulator Citra. Here, download the latest APK with the name that includes Citra MMJ Storage Access and Tutu. From my testing, this version delivers the best overall performance on the A1 Thor, especially for dual screen use. And finally, click the third link in the video description to go to the download page for the Wii U emulator CMU. And once again, this is a dual screen Android fork provided by Sapphire Rhodonite, specifically designed to work well on devices like the AYM Thor. Download the latest APK here as well. And once all three APK files are downloaded, we're ready to move on to installing them and configuring each emulator for proper dual screen layouts. Now open the file browser on your device and navigate to your downloads folder. From here, go ahead and install the three APK files we just downloaded. Just tap each file one by one and confirm the installation if prompted. Once that's done, you should now see three new app icons on your home screen. Melon DS for Nintendo DS, Citra for Nintendo 3DS, and CMU for Wii U. With the emulators installed, we're now ready to start configuring them for proper dual screen gameplay. Let's start with Melon DS. Open the app and right in the middle of the screen, tap Set ROM Directory. Now navigate to the folder where your Nintendo DS games are stored. If you followed my recommendation and used Emulation Station, this will be inside the ROMs folder and then the folder called NDS. Open that folder and tap the purple Use This Folder button at the bottom. You'll immediately see your games populate in the Melon DS game list. Next, tap the three dots in the top right corner and go into Settings. From here, open Video and then tap on Renderer and change it from Software to OpenGL. Doing this unlocks higher internal resolutions. I recommend setting the internal resolution to 4 times native, which for Nintendo DS works out to roughly 720p. You can experiment with higher values if you want, but 4 times is a great balance of clarity and performance. And if you want a more authentic look, you can also scroll down to filter and change it to LCD. This is completely optional, but you can always enable or disable it later, even from inside a game. Scroll down a bit further and tap on dual screen presets. Here, select the middle option, internal top and external bottom. This gives you the correct screen layout for the AYM Thor. And make sure that Keep DS Aspect Ratios is enabled. Now go back to the main settings menu and select Input. Open Key Mapping and quickly verify that your buttons are mapped correctly. Usually everything is fine, but sometimes the A, B, X and Y buttons can be swapped. And if that's the case, this is where you fix it. And once that is done, launch a game and give it a quick test. And if you want to tweak things from within the game, like how much the screens are filled or apply different filter overlays, simply swipe in from the left side of the screen to bring up the quick settings menu. Nintendo 3DS or Citra works very similar to Melon DS. When you open the app, just tap the large green button in the center and choose the folder where your 3DS game dumps or ROMs are stored on your device. And once you're inside that folder, tap on Use this folder. Now tap the three dots in the top right corner and select Input Binding. In this version of Citra, there's unfortunately no automatic button mapping, so you need to tap on each control one by one and map it to the corresponding button on your Thor. Take your time here, and once it's done, you won't need to touch this again. When you're finished, tap the small icon next to the three dots in the top right corner to enter the settings menu. Here you can increase the internal resolution to 3 or even 4 times native, depending on how much performance headroom you want. 
scroll down slightly and make sure to enable new 3DS mode. And once that's done you can go ahead and launch a game. Dual screen mode for 3DS will be enabled automatically, but you'll notice that the top screen is partially covered by touch controls. To fix this, simply swipe in from the left of the screen to open the menu, tap on settings at the top and then tap the box next to hide input buttons. That clears up the display and gives you a clean, proper dual screen Nintendo 3DS experience. Alright, we have one last platform to configure, Wii U. So open CMU, tap the three dots in the corner and go into settings. From here, select general settings and then tap on add game path. Tap the plus icon in the corner and just like before, navigate to the folder where your Wii U games are stored. Once you go back to the main screen, your games should now be listed automatically. Next, head back into settings and this time open input settings. Tap on controller 1 and under emulated controller, tap where it says disabled. From the menu that appears, select Wii U Gamepad. Then tap the purple setup all inputs button and choose your device, in this case the Odin controller. All of your controller bindings will now be mapped automatically, which is really convenient. Now return to the game list and tap on the three dots in the corner again. Select graphic packs and then tap on the download icon next to the three dots in the corner. Simu will automatically download a collection of game specific mods including graphic options, enhancements and sheets and these can be really useful later on. But they're a bit outside the scope of this video so we won't go deeper into them here. If you have any questions about graphic packs or want a deeper dive in another video feel free to ask in the comments down below. Now start any game to continue the configuration and once the game is running swipe in from the left side of the screen to open the in-game menu. Tap show pad to enable the second screen, in other words the Wii U gamepad screen. Now swipe in from the left one more time and select external pad screen. This will place the main game screen on the top display and the Wii U gamepad screen on the lower display, which is exactly the layout we want on the AYM4. And one more thing worth mentioning, some Wii U games can show minor graphical bugs. For example, here in Twilight Princess you might notice the map flickering on the left or not appearing correctly on the bottom screen at all. To fix this, head to the link in the video description called CMU Turnip Drivers. From there, download the latest turnip driver from Mr. Purple. It will come as a zip file which we will install in the next step. Back in CMU, open settings and then go into graphics settings. And at the top, tap on custom drivers. Tap the plus icon at the top right corner and select the zip file you just downloaded. If everything worked correctly, you'll see a message saying driver installed successfully. You can now select the driver instead of the system driver, which is the default option. And the next time you launch the game, the graphics issues should be gone and everything should render correctly. And one last tip before we wrap up the CMU configuration. If you want to get rid of that annoying notification overlay at the top of the screen, head back into settings and then tap on overlay settings. Scroll all the way to the bottom and simply uncheck the overlays for controller profiles, shader, compiler and friend list. That gives you a much cleaner, distraction free experience while playing. So we're done configuring the emulators, but I did promise you a more console-like experience, didn't I? And for that we're going to install a frontend called Console Launcher. Console Launcher has been around for a while, but it's become much more relevant recently thanks to its smooth dual screen support which works extremely well with a device like the AWM Thor. So use the link in the video description called Console Launcher Frontend and go to the latest release, download the APK file and install it, exactly the same way we did with the emulators earlier. Once that is done, make sure that your device is connected to Wi-Fi and then launch Console Launcher to start the setup. The first thing you'll be asked is whether Console Launcher should start automatically every time you power on your Thor, instead of booting into the standard Android home screen. I highly recommend enabling this if you want the full console experience. And don't worry, you can always switch back later by changing your default home app to Quickstep if you ever want to return to the stock Android launcher. Next you'll choose what console launcher should focus on visually, here I recommend selecting game icons. When asked what type of games you have, choose whether you mostly play retro games, android games or both, depending on your setup. And after that you'll be asked to choose an icon image style and this is where I strongly recommend selecting box art. This gives you the most authentic console-like look possible. Next you'll choose your default ROM folder and once again, because we used emulation station earlier, this part is easy. Simply select your main ROMs folder as the default location.
And finally, you'll be asked if you want to log into Retro Achievements. I won't be doing this in this video, but if you already have an account and want achievements in your games, feel free to sign in here. Console Launcher has now finished setting everything up, and for the most part, everything looks great. But as you might notice, my 3DS games are missing from the menu. For some reason, Console Launcher didn't automatically pick them up, and that can happen sometimes. So let's fix that right away. Tap the gear icon, then select front end from the menu on the left. Under missing players, that's the section with the alarm icon, you can see a few systems listed. What we're going to do now is to tap the plus icon, and from the list that appears, select Nintendo 3DS. Tap the 3DS icon, then select Set Paths, and navigate to the folder where your Nintendo 3DS games are stored. You can also tap Set Player and choose which emulator console launcher you should use to launch your games. And in our case, we're selecting Citra MMJ Storage Access Antutu. And once you have done that, click on Sync Files underneath, and our Nintendo 3DS games should immediately appear in the menu, fully integrated into the console-style interface. You'll notice, however, that the box art and images might not show up right away, and that's completely normal. Console Launcher needs a bit of time to download everything over Wi-Fi. This happens in the background, so you don't need to do anything. Just give it a little while, and when you come back later, everything should be fully populated automatically. Also, feel free to remove any icons you don't use. Just press and hold down on an icon and you can clean things up just exactly the way you want. And honestly, there's a lot more, and I really mean a lot more, that you can do with Console Launcher. You can tweak the layout, behavior and overall feel in countless ways, but at that point it really comes down to personal preference. So take your time, explore the settings and fine-tune it until it feels just right for you. Alright, time to wrap this up. In this video, we started with a fresh AWAN Thor. We set it up with a clean ROM folder structure, installed and configured dual screen emulators for Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, fixed common graphics issues and finished everything up with console launcher to give the Thor a truly console-like experience. From booting straight into a clean front end to proper dual screen layouts and box arts. This device now feels like it was built for emulation. If this guide helped you out, make sure to leave a like, it really helps the channel more than you might think. And if you want more setup guides, performance tweaks and deep dives into handouts like this, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss future videos. We're closing in on 40,000 subscribers, which is honestly insane. Thank you so much. If you run into any issues or if you have any questions about settings, emulators or frontends, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. I read them and I'll do my best to help in any way I can. Thank you so much for watching, enjoy your Away and Thor, and I'll see you in the next one.